Looking at this Colts rush defense, they're doing really well without Shaq Leonard. Uh, yeah. What have you seen from them so far? Um, I think they've always been the same. They always play hard, fast, physical, disruptive. And they've always been the same since I've been playing them. And um, I've been playing really good football in the run. You expecting to see him back in the mix uh, for them on Sunday? I really don't know his status, but um, I know he's been out for a little while. But if he's back, um, you know, he's a heart and soul of that defense. So, you know, he's always, you know, around the ball when he's in there. Well, going back there to the Zoll Stadium where the foot injury took place last year, will that be a mental hurdle for you to clear just to get it out of the way? My foot's fine, so no, I'm good. What was your feeling? Do you remember what you were feeling when you left there that day last uh, October? I know that kind of set you in motion for a return, but what was your feeling when you left there last October? Um, one foot felt different than the other, and <laughs> I wanted to figure out what was going on. So. Carl, how much, Derek, do you look forward to these you know, divisional battles? You mentioned it's always a physical game when you guys play the Colts. Yeah, I mean, there's always a battle in the trenches, and um, like you said, they're they've been good in um in run defense, and we know it's always a challenge. It's always been a challenge, so you gotta get your mind right um for Sunday, and you know it starts right here. So just trying to do that until Sunday comes. You think battle, Derek? Closer to getting that trademark home run type of carry that that you you know kind of patented. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, as long as we you know stick with it and continue to do the things we need to do to be able to have those big plays, um, then I think it, it, it will eventually come. You know, but you got to take care of the little things and make sure we're doing what we need to do to have those big plays. Pretty big battle of, of quality running backs here, Derek. I wonder what your thoughts are on, on Jonathan Taylor. What, what's your impressions of, of him? Uh, one of the best running backs in the league is not the best. Um, he's young and he's dominating the league at an uh, early age. And I, you know, I think he'll be doing it for a while. Um, and um, he's, he's, exci he's exciting for the game, and he's a big playmaker for them. And um, you know, it's going to be a challenge for our defense to stop him. But yeah, he's a little. You've played against him a lot. I mean, what, no matter who they've got, what do you kind of expect when you face the Colts in their defense? Um, big, physical, around the ball. Um, they hammer at the ball, try to get the ball out. Um, they're going to fly to the ball no matter where it's at, and they play full tilt. Guys built some momentum against the Raiders, and how important is it maybe to kind of keep the positives that you did then going on Sunday? Yeah, I think you just uh, try to build off the positives and then correct the things that we know that we need to get better at, and then continue to focus on that, heavy emphasis on that until Sunday comes and go out there and execute. First divisional game for you guys after you know three weeks of non-divisional games. How much do things kind of amp up when you go against the divisional foe? Well, we know each other very well, so you know it's really just being focused all week, um, you know, hammering on everything that we need to do to be able to win the game. You know, because we know it's always tough, and we know what type of games these are every time we play these guys. So, it's just really focusing on everything that we need to focus on to get out there and get a win. Have you noticed maybe a more heightened sense of focus this week because it is a divisional matchup? No, I think this this coach is being on us about you know what we need to do our keys and everything like that, and then making sure that it translates when we got here on the field and things like that, and just paying attention to the meetings and taking extra notes, whatever you need to do to be ready. How much what, how important was it for you and, and the offense in general to be able to get more involved in the passing game last week, and, and how good is it to know that a check down isn't necessarily a give up play when there's you or Dontrell who can break a tackle and, and make a big gain out of it? Yeah, and that, I just think you just take what defense gives you. Um, you get out there and be available, get you a spot, and then try to get north to south and take advantage of, you know, whatever you can out of the play whenever you catch the ball. So. How much do you enjoy that, though, Derek? I know, you know, being a running back, obviously, is part of the game a little bit, but just how much do you kind of like mixing in that aspect of it? I mean, I like the ball in my hand anywhere I can get it, catch it or, or run it, so it don't matter to me, so. It seems like a few of your teammates and, and Coach Frable after last week's game said, you know, they noticed maybe something even even more impressive about you than, than regular, whether it was breaking tackles or, you know, crashing through the, the pile, that kind of thing. When, when you look back at the, the clips at all, did, did you notice anything different at, at all about your about your own game? Um, just trying to run the ball hard and, you know, get the most out of a play and, you know, get, get north and south, break tackles and try to make a big play. I mean, that's all, all I was trying to do and, um, you know, try to be better at it this week. Go-to coffee order, and are you a Starbucks or a Dunkin'? I don't drink coffee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't drink coffee.
Yeah. I think uh, Robert Woods had only had one punt return maybe in his career, I think, before Sunday. What, you know, how did you guys settle on him? Was it kind of a process of elimination almost? And, and how, did, how good was he on that one? Sure, I thought he had a really good week of practice. Uh, that was probably the start of it. Um, you know, he's been back there and, and doing some work and doing some good things. And, you know, we obviously had the confidence in him to go into the game. And um, obviously, he did a really good job of going back there, catching the ball, handing the ball to the offense. And when he had an opportunity to return one, he did a really good job of making a guy miss in space and, and creating some positive yardage for us. So we were really happy with Robert going back there. I think one of the biggest things, he's a running back, so he's used to finding creases and holes and, and trying to catch the ball on the run and, and finding out where the actual return is going to go. Um, so, you know, he did it a little bit in college. Uh, I know he was always antsy to get back there and try to get one, but, you know, we obviously like how big he is too, where he can break some arm tackles because you see a lot of returners still get tackled with some arm tackles, but he's going to be big enough to run through those. And, um, you know, unfortunately, we end up having a penalty, but we were encouraged with the way Hassan ended up catching the ball and running and getting upfield. How much, how much scrambling goes into the special teams unit with all the injuries because backups become starters, practice squad guys or guys off the street become backups and special teams players. Yeah, it, it's nothing new uh, because, you know, and, and it's not just us. Uh, it's, a, it's around the league. You know, we'll have to scramble each and every week just because of guys getting hurt. Uh, they might be playing more offensively, defensively. Uh, they get taken off of special teams because we just know that um, in order for us to win, guys are going to have to go in there and, and play some offense and defense if guys get hurt. So we'll just move guys around and, and see. And, you know, we preach in the offseason of guys being versatile. And they've got to play a bunch of different positions, whether it's right guard on the punt, left guard on the punt team. they got to play them all. So uh, our guys are used to it, and we talk about it each and every week that they might have have to play multiple positions each week. We're trailing in there, Burks, that is, at, at kick return, not back deep, but yeah. where he is. What, what is it about him that makes you want to you know, make sure that he's involved on, on there? Yeah, uh, one, he's a big body that's willing to block. Um, and that's, you know, when a guy who gets drafted in the first round, you know, we've got to sit him down and talk to him that, hey, it's just not always offense or defense or whatever position he's going to play. You know, you're going to be asked to play some things on special teams. And he's embraced that. And he's done a really good job for us. Um, we trust him to even go back there and catch punts and kickoffs. Uh, and he's got to be another versatile guy that goes back there and do a bunch of different things. So uh, we're really happy with Traylon right now, what he's doing and helping our team. Continue to utilize Robert Woods in punt returns, or would you like to get Kyle back in the mix at some point? Yeah, um, you know, I think that's going to be a day by day, week by week basis. Uh, whether we want to have Robert back there, or if Kyle uh, can go back there and do that, we obviously got to continue to work with Kyle um, and try to continue to get him better on his catch mechanics. But uh, yeah, that's that's going to be a day by day thing. Run is obviously booming some of his punch. What, what are some of the things you're kind of harping on him that he needs to continue to do to get better? Yeah, I mean, he's striking the ball really well for us. Um, so, Jim, we don't want to do too much. Uh, yeah just because of what he's doing. But, you know, there's always things that we can work on with him, whether it's getting more hang time, whether it's getting more direction on his kicks. Um, you know, so there's always little things that we'll continue to harp on with him. And we got to continue to stress with him. It's just not punting because he's also got to be a good holder uh, to Randy, too. So those are a lot of things that we'll work on with Ryan uh, throughout the, throughout the uh, season. Speaking of him being a holder, we see him over here catching off the jugs machine. Is, was that your idea, his idea? How did that? Uh, that's, that's everyone's idea. Um, that's just one of those things when he came in, um, you know, he didn't hold his last two seasons at Colorado State. He held early on in his career. Uh, but that was just something that he had to get back to doing on a consistent basis. And this guy's just put in the work, and he did it in the offseason training camp. Um, you know, I, I, we just love his work ethic because he's out here all the time just trying to perfect his craft. And I know he's using the jugs machine, but normally it's Morgan Cox doing that. Yeah. It seems like he's just been a steady presence for you guys. How much does he really, like, help solidify that whole procedure? Yeah. Um, 
you know, Morgan, he's been awesome for us. He, he's a leader. Uh, he does everything that he's supposed to do. And he is like a jugs machine because when you go back there and you see all his snaps, they're perfect. We, we hardly have to move the laces, uh, which is going to be huge for our, one, our holder and our kicker. Um, so he obviously provides a great presence for us just to be there. A guy who's going to do his job all the time and do it right. Coach, you feel like you guys are getting closer to getting those long runs that Derrick Henry typically is able to get? I do. I think we were close on a couple last week. We obviously had, you know, the 24-yarder and a, a couple other double-digit uh, yardage runs. And I think it's just a matter of finishing those blocks, that last shove, that last bit of effort, uh, and we'll spring them into the secondary. So I do feel like we're close. Beyond just blocking the man in front of you, what are some of the things that have gone into the improvement in pass protection? Yeah, I think they're doing a good job of communicating the games that, they, that we've been seeing. You know, we've uh, done a nice job of – getting our protections uh, slid certain ways and, and trying to help out. And I think there's been some unselfish play too, some guys that are chipping and you know helping those tackles a little bit before they get out in their route. So it's been a combination of a lot of things. Uh, you know, I think guys been doing a nice job against man coverage as well, trying to get open in an efficient manner so we can get the ball out. How about Daly in particular, uh, you know, another game under his belt? How has he shown improvement to you? Yeah, I think more time on task. He's getting more and more comfortable with the scheme. You know, he's talking a little bit more with his teammates. and. And, you know, I think that's always something that leads to better chemistry on Sundays. So uh, excited to see his continued growth. Todd, Todd Trump, you know, was so effective for you in the first game out of the backfield. Might this week be an opportunity to get him more out in space in the passing game against the Colts? Yeah, I think we're always looking for opportunities to give, you know, playmakers a shot with the ball in their hands. And uh, Dontrell certainly did a nice job uh, in the opening week. And, and with his opportunity on third down, you know, uh, making a guy miss and, creating an explosive in a backed up third third and long situation last week. So uh, I like where he's headed and I like how he's fit into things. And, uh, you know, he's a dynamic guy with the ball in his hands. How much of a lift can it be offensively when the defense has got everything covered up, but you hit a big play like that off a check down? Yeah, I think that that's just a, a testament to how hard I, our guys work to have a nose for the sticks and to be situationally aware. You had some guys finishing well, blocking on the perimeter. <laughs> Uh, and that's just validation as a coaching staff that if you play hard and, uh, you know, you're never conceding anything, uh, that good things happen, you know, and, and that's that's a great example of that play there. Good start. <clears throat> you had a really good start in the first half. The second half, not as much. What went on this past game where you get 24 points and then you come back and you have zero in the second half? Yeah, it'd certainly be nice to be able to be a little more comfortable in the uh, in the second half. But no, we uh, we just need to be more consistent. You know, I think in the first half we really had a tenacity, a, a togetherness. Uh, you know, the details of our combinations and you know adjustments in the run game. Uh, you know, some guys getting open, like I said in in the past game, and then in the second half for whatever reason it just wasn't as consistent. Maybe one guy here, one guy there, a little miscommunication. And of course, when you don't convert third downs like we didn't in the second half, you're going to have less opportunities, uh, you know, to to extend those drives and give Derek another shot at at maybe the same run so he can see it a second time or, or uh, things of that nature. And and we were close, you know, we had, uh, you know, a, a fourth and in inches, uh, you know, hoop if he's able to keep his momentum rolling. We pick up a first down there. That's the cross midfield. We had a close call on a. Uh, backside in cut to trailing. Uh, you know, Ryan did a nice job getting through the progression there. We just weren't able to connect. So, again, I think we're close uh, to putting four quarters together. It's just going to take more consistency to get it done. And how do you think you've done this as far as like layering plays and, and setting things up for, you know, later in the game, et cetera? Yeah, again, I think that depends on the opportunities to be able to do it, right? If you don't pick up uh, first downs, you're not able to come back with the counter punch. I think in the first half, we were able to set up some things and then come back off of play passes or screens or what have you uh, off of those looks. Uh, but that gets difficult to do if, you, if you're not sustaining drives. So I've certainly got to do a better job at making sure that uh, you know we're able to get into those counter punches, if you will. Todd, along those lines of needing to be more consistent, I guess what does it take to be that? Is it as simple as just being mentally sharper what what does it take to have that consistency from start to finish I think it's a, a combination of things I think there's you know a focus that needs to be on a play-by-play -play basis you know and making sure that we're resetting every single huddle uh, certainly uh, from my perspective and, and things that I can improve on it's, it's just a 
and intentionality with the drive review on the sidelines and setting up what we're going to be getting to the next drive or maybe the next third down, you know, so we can kind of predict some of those uh, futures, if you will. Uh, and, and so we're all looking for ways to become more consistent. What it's not is pressing. You know, what, it, what it's not is, oh, man, this is a big third down. We got we to gotta pick this up. We, we have to let, you know, our playmakers go make plays. We have to, uh, you know, stick to our training and the rules that we've established and, and go execute. Coach, looking specifically on this defense at DeForest Buckner, just the challenge, matchup challenge that he presents. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're a very talented front across the board. Um, DeForest brings a really unique skill set. He's very long. He's big and powerful. Uh, he's an instinctive football player. Uh, and so that's, that's going to be a, a big challenge for our interior. The communication there, uh, the fits on our combinations are going to be critical, right? Making sure that we're in, in and out of the, the right plays, uh, you know, and that Ryan's helping us uh, with the looks. Those are all going to be critical things. Uh, and then obviously we've got to handle the road environment on top of that. So there's the challenge of, you know, potentially being on silent cadences and, and all those things. So big challenge ahead of us, and uh, it certainly starts with DeForest. Kind of the talent, obviously, you lose with with Taylor being out. Is is there some adjustment at all to, you know, kind of not having that same energy, vocal presence, whether it's in the huddle, go to the room, or whatever? Is there adjustment process there at all? You know, Taylor is is such a, a unique individual and and brings energy and life to those around him, and and we, you know, we miss his presence out there. Even even on top of that, I would say that just the chemistry of making those calls with the guys next to you, whether it be with the tight end or whether it be, you know, with Brew, uh, where maybe it used to be a one-word communication to guys that have done it a lot, and now it's a little bit more layered, right? Uh, and so there's certainly aspects to that. But for a long time around here, you know, we've had that next man up mentality, and we've certainly uh, never said, well, we're dependent on one guy to make this thing go. And so we expect that, that product to become a little bit more consistent here as we get more time on task with each other. Did you ever come out of the locker room on the second half and say, let's blow this team out? I mean, I mean let's, let's blow them out. Let's get it done. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> I would love that for my uh, blood pressure and my, uh, you know, my stress level. I would love to be able to do that. Yeah. Again, you know, there's that, that fine line between confidence on what you've done in the first half, right, and then assuming that it's just going to happen in the second half. And that's where the line's gotten a little bit blurred for us. We need to stay on those details. The things that drove the success in the first half can't wane in the second half. And I don't think anybody's coming off the gas, so to speak. Uh, it's just that urgency and maintaining that tenacity for the details that, that we need to uh, continue to push for. Follow, like all the things being said about the team, but you know, as soon as they're a struggle offensively, they say fire Todd down. You know, when you're getting blamed for everything, like how do you handle that and just continue to keep your head down and, and, and do what you have to do? Yeah, I will uh, tell you very bluntly, I I can't pay attention uh, to all the stuff that's going on out out there and all the opinions about me. Uh, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and I respect the fact that people have jobs to do and and uh, you know, people to find to, to place blame on and, and all that. I know that I'm responsible for the offense. I know that uh, you know, there are certain things that come with this role, responsibilities, critiques, um, you know, and, and kind of constant evaluation uh, that comes with this role. But I can't afford to let somebody else's opinion cloud what Coach Brabel thinks of the job I'm doing or what John Robinson thinks of the job I'm doing or, frankly, what the players in the locker room think of the job I'm doing. I owe it to them uh, to give my best. And uh, in that process, I really try hard to maintain my identity. I work my tail off, and I do it for you know, a, a bigger audience uh, than trying to you know, get the praise of man. I, I don't really do this job to be celebrated um, in, in the media. I do this job so that I can uh, be the man I'm called to be in the role that I have. And hopefully I can continue to improve in that uh, at every turn and help get this offense uh, where we want it to be. I know, um, just to ask quick, but, uh, some, you know, probably a lot of people thought that, that Hooper and, and maybe even Shake as well might, might be more involved, more, more productive at this point. Is it, in some respects, is that, is that a matter of blocking? We know how important blocking is for tight ends to get on the field. Is that one of the reasons maybe we aren't seeing them as involved as much in the, in the past game? 
Yeah, and I, you know, I think that uh, we're always pressing to try to find ways to create matchups, right? This is a matchup-driven league, uh, and sometimes the matchups where they need to be involved in blocking becomes more important to our efficiency and success than necessarily them free releasing on a route. Um, you know, I think we've been close on a couple opportunities uh, with hoops situationally. I think Chig's coming along. I think his role's developing. Um, but in the same vein, I've seen some other guys step up and take advantage of their opportunities, like Robert Woods having a, a good game for us last week and a number of targets. And so between Derek's workload and whoever steps up in the receiver department and all that, we're not really keeping tally on, well, this guy had this many targets and this many opportunities. Uh, we're just going to continue to press them to try to do the best in their job and then hope Ryan finds the guy that's open. Maybe some of these other backs you've uh, seen in the NFL. Yeah, he's a he's a really good back. Um, got the ability for the X play always. Um, explosive. I think he's got good patience, good vision to see and find creases. We got to do a good job making sure we don't give him any creases in there because if he sees it, he hits it and has a has a knack for bursting through and getting on the second, third level pretty quickly. So we're gonna have to do a good job keeping him bottled up. Yeah, I think uh, that's a big part of what we do in general, is trying to make everything look the same as much as we can, and then post-snap having to go and adjust as we need to. Um, but you're right, he's seen it all. He's Everybody's been throwing some things at him here this year even. Um, so we're going to have to do a good job disguising like we always talk about, um, not showing our hand too early for him. I think he does a great job at the line of scrimmage. Um, and in that scheme, they've always been good at the line of scrimmage of being able to get in and out of plays or get to a play they think's best um, if they see something pre-snap. So we just got to do a good job making sure we're holding our water and see where it goes. He's got young receivers that he's been working with. How, what do you see from them on film and how they come along? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, Pierce had the big catch last week down the sideline. Um, again, I think Obviously, Pittman's been there, and he's been a guy. I mean, they're going to look to get him the ball as well. And then you got got Dolan that they mix in there. And they've actually used Hines a little bit out there. Like, that's one of one of his big attributes is his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield or if they line him up out in the slot. So they're, they're finding creative ways to get those guys the ball. Um, I think the tight end last week in the red zone came up big for him, big body dude. So... I mean, I think they're doing a good job putting their players, their receivers in positions to do what they do well and then try to execute their scheme to relate relate back, to those guys. Back on Ryan, you've got three weeks of film to see what he looks like with the Colts, but how much do you have to go back and delve into his Falcons film to find <laughs> tendencies and things like that versus, you know, what he's done with the Colts? Yeah, you always go back and look. I mean, just because it's such a small sample size. Um, I think that's with any player at any position. It's more trying to figure out who they are as a player, their skill sets, what they do well, what they might struggle with, probably even more so with the quarterback in terms of scheme. Um, <clears throat> but you're doing that with, with any of these players just because if you don't have a big sample size from where they're at now, you're going to have to go back to, to get some plays where you can evaluate kind of who they are. Is it tougher like not having your full front four like, is it tough to, to balance like, having to simulate pressure and blitz a lot more than maybe you, you would have had if you had everybody ready to go? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, as the season goes, you got to use the pieces you got, right? And we got guys that we feel confident in, regardless of whatever scheme we got. We're n never going to be wholesale changing based on some of that stuff. Um, but we got to have confidence in those guys to be able to go in and execute whatever it is, whether we're rushing four, rushing five. Um, I don't think you can wholesale change who you are from my identity, schematically, whatever it might be. And there might be some tweaks just to make sure you're getting those guys in position to do what they do best, right, and not putting them in harm's way. Um, but we're going to be true to who we are, and hopefully those guys can continue to step up and make plays for us. Shane, what does Caleb need to do to earn more playing time, and how have you seen him handle maybe not being out there as much as he'd like? Yeah, he's got to work, man. It's every day trying to improve. Like, that's the message for all 53 guys that are on our active roster and the other 16 that are on the practice squad. We're out here every day to improve, to become a better player, um, whether it's on an individual basis, 
on a unit basis to fit, but just put your head down and work. I think he's handled it well. Um, I think he's accepted the challenge. Um, not a whole lot different than Elijah Molden last year. He had some early struggles and then came back and ended up having a good year for us. So I think the message to him is just put your head down, keep working. Um, when opportunities arise, hopefully the work and, and the commitment that you've made throughout the week pays off on Sunday. Are there any not particular things the, that went into like him going from a starter in training camp to a guy who played one snap last week? Yeah, I think we, uh, we made a decision to go with Mitch last week. Um, a lot of things go into that decision, but we, we made a decision to go with Mitch. How long does it generally take a guy to start trending in the right direction when he's in that sort of position? I mean, uh, it's case by case. I mean, again, they got multiple days throughout the week to get out here and work, be locked in in meetings, be walk, locked in and walk through and jog through, uh, take advantage of their reps, speed reps, show team reps, right? But they got a lot of opportunities throughout the week to hopefully that thing starts to turn quickly for these guys. What have you been most impressed with with Roger being a rookie? And there's not a lot that you're critiquing every day. I mean, obviously yeah. for you, you are. But for us as the media, it just doesn't seem like there's a lot to pick on early on. I mean, just is yeah. that impressive as a rookie? I, yeah, I think he's a very poised individual. Um, he loves football. You can see it. Um, gets frustrated when he makes a mistake, doesn't want to make the same mistake twice. I think he learns well from his mistakes, which kind of allows you to move on to the next thing, right? Um, and I think overall, just his, his demeanor and his love for the football has kind of shown up throughout in his ability to learn, his ability to go out there and execute, and then obviously on Sundays to go out there and play without, without the panic, without the, oh, crap, what's, what's happening now? He's, he's under control. A guy like Schobert, I know he's only practice squad, but a um, <coughs> guy with his experience, you know, potentially being in there, and also how hard is it, considering he's not been in, you know, training camp much or, or, or played, how, how hard is it to potentially? Yeah, I think play? anytime you got a vet that's played a lot of football, um, I think it's good, good for the room, good for the unit. Um, just the knowledge that he can kind of share with some of those other guys is always valuable. I think the transition's probably a little bit easier for guys like that. Coming in, I mean, he's been in a lot of systems, so there's a lot of, well, we did it this way. Oh, yeah, we did it like that at Cleveland. Oh, we did it like this here. So there's a lot of uh, his ability to kind of relate things to what he's done. Um, and then we'll just have to see as the week goes where he's at in terms of picking picking up what we're doing. He's a, sm he's a smart dude. And then also just where he's at condition Edwards? level. What, what about Edwards and how valuable could his versatility be? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm excited to add him. I am. Um, I think his, his pass rush ability stands out. Um, I remember watching him a few years ago when he was a free agent and being excited about him and liking him then. Um, so excited to add him. We'll, we'll kind of see as the week goes what, what, what he's able to handle um, and what he can give us in terms of where he fits for us. What does uh, have in terms of either getting – you know, deep and making the play or, or drawing a PI and, and how do you advise your DB? Yeah, he's, he's big. He's got a big catch radius. Um, you just can't panic, right? You got to be able to stay in phase. You got to be able to locate the ball and you can't, you can't panic on a guy like that. And he's big. They're going to throw it up and he's going to be able to go up to it and you better be in position to make a play on the ball, right? You can't, I mean, it is what it is. We can't really face guard or do any of that. We got to be able to make plays on the ball and make sure we get our head around. But it starts with, with not panicking when he goes. And hopefully we're in a good position at the point where we can get our head around and be able to play the football. Shane, is there a commonality in the X plays you guys have given up and, and what's maybe the, the key for fixing that? Yeah, I think there's, uh, I mean, we've had some runs and we've had some passes. And I told the guys today, like, you go back and look, X plays equal points. It does. Like, just look at all our drives throughout the season. We give up X plays, there's, there's points associated. We don't give up X plays, there's not many points. So we got to continue to stress making them earn it, not getting the ball thrown over our head, not giving them creases to gash us for 15, 20 yards in the run game. Um, got to keep things in front of us and ho hopefully make them drive the field. The more, more times they got to run a play, the more opportunities for us to make a play, right? And to get off the field, get them a negative yard, yardage, get them off track. Um, so that's something we, we got to get fixed. We got to get fixed, and it's kind of hurt us here early on um, these first three games.